The movie begins in Solomera Hive, as we see a group of black-roped people with crosses drawn on their faces, making their way inside a strange-looking hive. As the group draws nearer to the center, one of them named Black Hat feels a sense of unease. He says that the place feels more like a grave, but the leader named Priest remains steadfast. He says that they have their orders, and they would complete their mission to locate the queen. Upon moving further, they detect unsettling sounds ahead and ready their weapons, only to realize too late that they've fallen into a trap. All of a sudden, they are attacked, and the people are pulled underground. Some manage to escape into the sunlight, but as they approach the final tunnel, Priest fails to prevent Black Hat from being captured, and the scene cuts off. The world of mankind has always coexisted with vampires, locked in a perpetual struggle. Both sides remained opposing each other for centuries, and the war persisted for thousands of years. The vampires had strength and power, while the men had the sun. Still, it was not enough. After centuries of war that ravaged both sides and the world itself, humans sought refuge within fortified cities guarded by the church. To combat the vampire menace, the church then created the ultimate weapon called the priests. These formidable warriors were skilled in the art of vampire combat. They almost single-handedly eradicated the vampire threat. With the surviving vampires contained, the church had no more use for the priests, thus they were disbanded. However, they were feared and were bound to become the next target of the humans. Hence, the poor, now useless priests were relegated to obscurity alongside their former adversaries. Today, only a handful of priests remain integrated into a society that has moved beyond their need fading into the shadows alongside the vampires. Years after the chaos, we see a man named Owen who is drilling into the earth, monitoring radiation levels. After a while of silent observation, he informs his wife Shannon that their findings suggest they can begin planting. Although he isn't too happy, after hearing her say that she is proud of him, a small smile begins to form on his face. Shortly after, their daughter Lucy returns home. She teasingly remarks about the scent of food. Owen asks her where she had been, and the girl replies that she went out to mingle in the town. However, the man grows irate upon learning, she disobeyed him, and ventured out into town. He reminds her that their location demands sacrifices, a rule she can't flout. Feeling trapped in their outpost, Lucy retaliates, sparking a heated argument. They argue back and forth until Shannon interrupts them, telling them to keep quiet. They say grace, quelling the tension momentarily. Unbeknownst to them, their momentary peace is going to be interrupted once more. All of a sudden, tremors shake the ground, sending the family into panic. Scared, Lucy calls out to her father who tells them to be quiet. Going towards the window, Owen peers outside and spots a pack of vampires closing in. Urging their daughter to safety, Shannon guides Lucy into their hiding spot, cautioning her to remain silent no matter what she hears. Meanwhile, she stays behind to assist Owen. Amidst gunfire and agonized cries, Lucy listens helplessly as her parents fall victim to the vampire. As the tragedy unfolds, the scene shifts to Cathedral City, which is still under the watchful eye of the church. Priests mingle among the populace, and the tolling bells command reverence from all. An ominous voice speaks in the background, telling them that to go against the church is to go against God. Although the words are holy, the tone and the background seem more like the dictatorship of the church than anything else. All of a sudden, the monitors inform that the confession booths are open, and the priest goes towards them. Entering the confessional booth, the priest pleads for absolution, haunted by memories of the vampire war and his failures. He says that he keeps remembering how weak he was, but what troubles him the most is his sudden doubts about his faith. He seeks guidance from the automated Monsignor Orlas. In response, Monsignor Orlas emphasizes that the devil comes in many shapes and sizes, Thus it is important for him to offer a personal sacrifice and labor to combat it. Moreover, he should keep praying and obeying the church as he is, because to go against the church is to go against God. Later, the priest rides the elevator home, accompanied by a curious boy and his mother. The little boy keeps asking about the priest's tattoo. Scared of the priest, the boy's mother swiftly advises him against engaging in conversation with priests, prompting an awkward silence. Upon reaching his apartment, the priest finds out a man trailing him and quickly attacks him. Before he can do anything, the man quickly introduces himself as Hicks, the sheriff from his brother Owen's town. He delivers devastating news that there was a sudden vampire attack in which his brother was badly injured. Lucy has been abducted by vampires and Shannon is no more. As Hicks follows the priest inside, he reveals how Lucy used to talk about him. She had great admiration for the priest's prowess in battling vampires. She used to say that when it came to fighting those creatures, Priest was the best. 
In an attempt to persuade him to help in rescuing her, Hicks tells him that he plans to go rescue Lucy, so if he wants to tag along, he can come with her. Unable to act without authority, the priest seeks reinstatement from the ruling clergy. Monsignor Orlis, already briefed by Monsignor Chamberlain, dismisses the priest's claims, attributing the attack to wasteland bandits. Despite Chamberlain's attempts to aid him, the priest is silenced. He is warned against shaking the citizens' faith and reminded of the severe consequences of challenging clerical authority. Still, the priest persists, going so far as even begging, but the Monsignor reiterates the absolute prohibition against doubting clerical authority. Any disobedience would result in the priest's expulsion from the order and excommunication. He also makes sure to remind him that to go against the church is to go against God. On the other hand, in a speeding train, Lucy finds herself confined in a cage by the vampires, enduring taunts until Black Hat's arrival. He assures her she's caged for her own safety. She defiantly warns him that her uncle, the priest, will come for her and teach him a lesson. Unbeknownst to Lucy, Black Hat counts on precisely that. Meanwhile, Monsignor Chamberlain delivers the final judgment to the priest, who expresses disappointment at the disregard for his sacrifices. Chamberlain argues that the war has been decisively won, but the priest vehemently disagrees, saying that the war is not over for him yet. As police storm the bar, Chamberlain urges him to consider the greater good and refrain from inciting further conflict. Ms. Harton, the priest disregards his vow and swiftly incapacitates the officers. Later, armed and resolved, the priest readies himself to rescue Lucy. Taking out his ride, he departs Cathedral City, leaving behind the remnants of civilization for the unforgiving wasteland. Racing with determination, he reaches his brother's outpost, finding it in ruins. Among the debris, he discovers a photo of Owen's family. He picks up the blood-splattered image. As the priest is looking at it, Hicks arrives there. He initially mistakes him for a looter, but then the sheriff is relieved to see the priest, and they set off together for town. Upon their arrival, Sheriff Hicks wastes no time in confronting a salesman, attempting to swindle the townspeople with fake vampire fighting weapons. With a firm hand, he ushers the charlatan out of town, quelling the protests of the townsfolk who still harbor fears of vampire attacks. Despite their clamoring for protection, Hicks stands firm in his assertion that vampires are no longer a threat for them. Later, the two arrive at the place where Owen is. There they are in the tense anticipation of news about Owen's condition when the doctor comes out. Who tells them that Owen is awake now, and the priest goes in. Seated beside his injured brother, the priest listens as Owen questions why he never returned. With a heavy heart, the priest explains the complexities after war. As Owen laments his inability to save Shannon, he asks the priest to bring back Lucy at all cost. Heartbroken by his brother's anguish, the priest promises to take out each and every vampire that stole their happiness. Subsequently, Hicks confides in the priest about the clergy's pursuit and their prohibition against Lucy's rescue. Despite Hicks's fervent desire to aid in the mission, the priest initially rebuffs him. However, Hicks's impressive display of skill, when he slices a bullet in half with precision, earns him the priest's respect. Before departing, he asks the priest about the bullets that he is preparing. He thought priests didn't use any firearms. The priest affirms and tells him that they were, in fact, for him. Bingo. Meanwhile, in the shadowed halls of Cathedral City, a squadron of priests receives the ominous directive from the Monsignors to apprehend the rogue priest, deceased or alive. Among them, the priestess expresses reservations about the orders, but duty compels her forward. On the other hand, priest's brother also passes away. He solemnly attends his brother and Shannon's funeral. The both of them are laid to rest together. After the somber atmosphere, Hicks joins him at Owen's outpost, eager to learn of any leads. The priest reveals his discovery of unfamiliar footprints neither belonging to vampires nor the familiars who are another species of the vampires. Determined, they set out in the direction of these mysterious tracks. Riding towards the nearest vampire reservation, Hicks remarks on its fallen status, emphasizing the dwindling daylight. Upon entry, they find the area devoid of guards. Inside, they find a couple of caged illegal familiars instead. Hicks explains that many, coming from the fritters, willingly seek becoming vampire slaves. He doesn't understand the idea behind it. But as long as they keep to themselves, it makes no difference to him. Approaching a familiar, they are met with hostility as the familiar asserts the priest's unwelcome presence on their protected land. Undeterred, Hicks states their purpose. He says that a few days back, a girl was kidnapped by a pack of vampires and it seemed like the pack came from this direction. The familiar denies of having any trespassers. With the main gate to the bunker where the vampires reside opened, the two venture inside. 
There, they are confronted by the desolate sight of the guard's lifeless forms, strewn across the ground. Entering a cell, the priest confronts a familiar, his tone steely as he threatens to disturb their master's resting place. If Lucy's whereabouts aren't revealed, the tension mounts as the interrogation unfolds. Just then, a group of familiars emerges, poised for battle. They unleash their fury upon Sheriff Hicks, who takes one out and rushes outside, only to be confronted by another assailant. In the nick of time, the priest intervenes, swiftly dispatching the familiars with lethal precision, except for one. With a fierce demeanor, the priest interrogates the remaining familiar, only to be met with staunch defense of the vampires. If the vampires are monsters, then so is the priest. As the sun begins its descent, the familiar taunts the priest, declaring that nightfall is the vampire's time to shine. As soon as the sunlight vanishes, the menacing vampires appear one by one. Undeterred, the priest arms himself with a Bible, which cunningly conceals weapons within its pages. With swift precision, he dispatches two vampires, while Hicks attempts to lend aid with his firearm. However, when Hicks is overpowered, the priest swiftly dispatches the assailant. At the end of the assault, only one vampire remains, who flees after a harrowing scream. Returning to the familiar, the priest presses for information once more. Reluctantly, the familiar reveals that Lucy was taken westward, but warns of impending danger. Before the priest can extract more, he is attacked by the returning vampire, leading to a fierce struggle that culminates in a tumble within the confines of the reservation. Poor Hicks waits anxiously with his gun drawn. Finally, someone comes out, and thankfully it is the priest who emerges victorious. In the aftermath, they deliberate their next move, ultimately deciding to investigate the Solomira hive to the west. Despite Hicks's disbelief that any hives remain, the priest suggests that uncovering the missing vampires from the reservation may lead them to Lucy. Providing Hicks with invaluable insights on vampire combat techniques, the priest stresses the importance of anticipating their movements. If he does that, it would be a piece of cake taking out a vampire. Meanwhile, back in the train where Lucy is kept, the town salesman seeks out Black Hat. He is offering information in exchange for compensation. However, faced with Black Hat's menacing threat, he divulges the details anyway. He reveals the priest's recent presence in the town, accompanied by the sheriff. After this information is given, Black Hat swiftly transforms him into a familiar, drinking his blood as punishment despite his cooperation. What a douche. On the other side, Priestess arrives at the outpost, hot on their trail. Unaware of her pursuit, the priest and Sheriff Hicks continue their journey westward. During a break in their journey, the priest probes Hicks about his brother's knowledge of his relationship with Lucy. The man says no. Hicks did love her deeply, and she wanted to tell her dad, but it was hard since the man was always busy working. As they talk, the priest tells him just in case, that if Lucy happened to be turned, he himself would end her life. However, this sentiment is vehemently opposed by Hicks, who replies that he wasn't there to protect her once. He would not make that mistake twice. The two continue their journey, and as they reach the hive, the priest is flooded with memories of past battles within its walls. Lighting up the interior, he instructs Hicks to shoot anything that moves, except him, as he descends into the depths. Meanwhile, Hicks discovers a buried toy. As he picks it up, a sense of dread creeps up on him. While he is busy being occupied by the doll, a looming presence catches him off guard, poised to strike. Amidst the labyrinthine tunnels of the hive, the priest catches sight of a fleeting figure darting past him. This prompts him to give chase. As he nears a glimmer of light at the tunnel's end, he's ambushed by the priestess. Surprised by her presence, he learns she was dispatched by the clergy after their separation at the reservation. She tells him that there are four of them out here after him, and they split up. She came here hoping to get ahead of him. Although the woman is after him, it doesn't seem like it. She tells him how she couldn't believe it after finding out that he broke his vow. The priest tells her how they left him with no other choice. Just then, the distant sound of gunfire interrupts their exchange, leading them to reunite with Hicks. There, they find the man cowering in fear. It seems that a towering monster is pursuing him. They tell him about the looming threat, which is a hive guardian. Since he is too massive, he can't descend into the depths. In order to take him out, the priest and priestess leap into action. Engaging in a fierce battle, they manage to incapacitate the creature. The priest slices him off with his daggers. However, there is still a little life left in him yet. As he begins to stir again, Hicks intervenes, delivering the final, lethal shot. As they regroup, Priestess wonders why there was a guardian in this abandoned hive. She further expresses concern over Hicks's potential opposition to Lucy's fate if she happened to be infected. The priest tells her that he knows, and even if he tries, he won't be able to stop him. 
The priestess also reveals her own struggles with post-traumatic stress disorder stemming from the war. In a rare moment of vulnerability, she confides in the priest, acknowledging their shared pain and the solace she finds in thoughts of him. The group soon presses forward into the hive's depths. There, they stumble upon a newly constructed section, housing a massive hive designed for a formidable army. To their bewilderment, however, the hive stands deserted, shrouded in an ominous silence. With more questions than answers, the trio presses on, determined to unravel the mystery. As they move forward, Hicks catches up with the priestess, asking her about how she came to be in the clergy. She confides in Hicks, revealing how she was chosen at a very young age, so she doesn't remember much, but the priest was chosen after he was at least about his age, thus he had to sacrifice far more than anyone else. Sensing a shift in the atmosphere, they are drawn to a massive exit revealing a vista, overlooking the town of Jericho. Soon, the realization sets in that the army of vampires have gone to invade that town, which happens to be the destination of the other priests. On the other hand, the vampire train arrives at the Jericho station, baffling the station attendant. To his horror, a vampire emerges and swiftly dispatches him. Black Hat steps off the train, signaling the commencement of their attack. Chaos erupts as the vampire army descends upon the town, orchestrated by Black Hat with sinister precision. In the midst of the onslaught, the three priests sent after the renegade priest confront him. With swift, decisive action, he takes out the first assailant. He is unfazed by the confrontation, and even offers the remaining priests a chance to join him as ally. The following morning, the group arrives at the desolate town, its once bustling streets now eerily silent. As they search the buildings, Priestess uncovers dynamite, while Hicks comes to the grim realization that the town's inhabitants have all perished due to the overwhelming number of vampire mouths to feed. They find Priest in the heart of town, solemnly praying over the bodies of the fallen priests. Soon Priestess also joins. As they mourn the loss of their comrades, Hicks questions what kind of vampire could have vanquished three priests with such ease. Priest somberly acknowledges that they face a new and formidable threat, one unlike anything they've encountered before. As they race against time to thwart the vampire's cunning plan, they arrive at the train station, where Hicks reveals the intricate railway network connecting Jericho to the fortified cities. Priestess and Priest exchange worried glances, realizing the gravity of the situation. It turns out that they have been strategically drawn away from the cities, leaving them vulnerable to the impending vampire onslaught. With this grim realization, Priestess clutches the dynamite, her mind already formulating a plan to disrupt the vampire's sinister plot, while rescuing Lucy from the train. Priest heads off to refuel their bikes, his mind racing with the weight of their mission. Meanwhile, in a dimly lit compartment aboard the train, Lucy finds herself at the mercy of Black Hat. Her weary eyes betray her fear and exhaustion. Black Hat asks her to eat since she has been starving for days, but his voice carries an underlying menace. Lucy, sensing the imminent danger, covertly arms herself with a hidden knife when Black Hat is not looking. Smart move. On the other side, in the desolate streets of Jericho, Hicks grapples with the prospect of taking out Lucy if she's been infected. He asks if the priest would really take out his own flesh and blood. Priestess, her gaze steely and resolute, assures Hicks that Lucy's transformation into a familiar severs the bonds of kinship. Once she becomes a familiar, she would no longer be the Lucy that he knows. Her allegiance would be to the vampire cause, and she would become a threat to their survival. Before departing Jericho, they solemnly cremate the bodies of the fallen priests, honoring their s amidst the flickering flames. Priestess reminds Priest that their strength stems not from the church, but from God. With a tender expression, she confesses her love for him, revealing a lingering hope that Shannon's death might liberate him from the shackles of duty, but Priest solemnly rejects her. Before parting ways, she entrusts him with a special weapon, a token of their shared bond and her unwavering faith in his abilities. As they ride toward the train, their path is halted by Hicks who points his gun at the priest, demanding a promise that Priest won't take out Lucy if she's been turned. He says that he has no right to her fate. Just then, the priestess unveils the truth. It turns out, Lucy is Priest and Shannon's own daughter, entrusted to Owen's care as a sacrifice to the clergy. Faced with Hicks's ultimatum, Priest acknowledges that only together can they hope to save Lucy from her fate. As they approach the train, Priestess prepares to detonate the rails, while Hicks stealthily infiltrates the train from the rear. The woman is then followed by menacing familiars. Meanwhile, inside the train, Hicks navigates the treacherous depths of the vampire lair, while Priest confronts Black Hat atop the speeding train. In a shocking revelation, Black Hat unveils the truth of his transformation into a human vampire by the Vampire Queen. 
He offers Priest a chance to join him as an ally. However, Priest Resolve remains unyielding as he demands where his daughter is. Unable to come to an agreement, the two begin to fight. Black Hat demonstrates his newfound strength, overpowering the Priest. On the other hand, as Priestess sets up the explosives on the tracks, the attackers catch up to her. With amazing skill, she swiftly dispatches each assailant. However, her triumph is short-lived as she realizes one of the familiars has tampered with the detonator, forcing her to swiftly adapt and devise a new plan to stop the train. Meanwhile, on the speeding train, Priest and Black Hat engage in a fierce battle where Black Hat maintains the upper hand. Despite Black Hat's relentless offers of allegiance, Priest remains steadfast in his refusal, unleashing a flurry of attacks that his opponent effortlessly evades. He is then thrown off the train and clings to the edge of the train for survival. Black Hat mistakenly believes he's sent him hurtling to his demise. Inside the train, Hicks navigates through perilous corridors, narrowly escaping a nest of awakening vampires before stumbling upon Lucy. The woman is being dragged away by a familiar. Determined to rescue her, Hicks prepares to blast through the door when Priest bursts into the scene. Together they ward off the vampires with gunfire and sunlight streaming into the car. Just as they fight their way towards Lucy, their rescue is thwarted by Black Hat, who appears and hurls Hicks from the train. Priest once again finds himself overpowered by Black Hat's relentless assault. Angered, Lucy seizes a moment of opportunity, igniting the familiar in flames. She takes out her dagger and confronts Black Hat, only to be met with a shocking revelation that the priest is her father. The shocked woman is then stripped of her weapon, and her father is impaled to the wall by Black Hat. The vampire then seizes Lucy and flees the train, leaving Priest to burn inside the lit train. On the other side, Priestess races toward the train with explosives mounted on her bike. She prays for strength as she charges in. Back inside, the priest regains consciousness and frees himself from the wall. He watches the weapon that the priestess gave him with renewed determination. At the brink of Lucy's potential transformation, Priest launches a decisive strike against Black Hat and finally rescues Lucy from the vampire's clutches. Just as they teeter on the edge of the speeding train, he sees Priestess hurtling towards them with explosives. The two leap from the bike and train simultaneously and narrowly escape, while the explosive impact decimates the train and its vampire occupants. Witnessing the explosion, Hicks rushes towards the scene, arriving to find Priest and Lucy miraculously alive amidst the chaos. Overwhelmed with relief, Lucy rushes into Hicks's arms. Priestess also comes out safe and the chaos finally ends as they watch the lonely hat of Black Hat tumbling to the ground. Later, Priest confronts Monsignor Orlas at a mass, presenting evidence of the vampire threat with the severed head of a vampire, and urging him to investigate the burning train outside the city for further confirmation. The enraged Orlas tries to paint him as a liar, but the priest stands his ground, asserting that the war with the vampires is far from over. He then leaves the disbelieving crowd and goes to meet the priestess in the wastelands. She informs him of their allies' readiness at another city. With a nod of understanding, Priest rides off into the sunset, his resolve unshakable as he embarks on the next chapter of their battle against the vampire menace. This time, he is not a slave to the church, but rather a warrior fighting for what he himself believes in, accompanied by the unwavering support of his comrades.